All right, I've got some uh, composite blades here, inspired in the 90s by Warren Thomas's work back when he used to use mostly steel and carbon fiber. So if you've looked at some of my, my old videos, here's an old one. Now I would start with uh, carbon fiber cloth, in this case, mostly fiberglass and a couple layers of carbon fiber over top. And uh, it makes for a pretty sturdy blade. I hammered that in with a three pound steel hammer. So it's not much good anymore, but it's better than a two by four. And I'll go over here to the light and show you how these are put together. So I'll cut fingers in the back of the steel insert and then laminate whatever composite over top of that. Gives it a really lightweight blade. Now they're not meant for being hit with hammers, but I'm just trying to demonstrate what they'll, you know, that they'll hold together. Eventually, somehow, these composite blades have to fail in a way that a solid metal one won't, but... Now this one's only 1.9 ounces, and I've uh, gotten into the titanium thing, 6.4 titanium alloy. And instead of carbon fiber, I use G10 because I'm going to try and break this knife, and the carbon fiber is really expensive. I'm not trying to prove that this is the best way to make a knife. I'm trying to show that my bonding method will work, especially in low temperatures. We're about 15 Celsius below freezing here. So. No editing on this one. I'm getting a little lazy in my old age. It's a lot faster just to you uh, bond some plates to the outside of the steel, or in this case titanium. Some of those other knives had more than 34 layers of material, and of course I pull uh, vacuum on them to get full saturation. And then I put them in a 12 ton press. Now the thing about the epoxy is it usually is not your best choice for cold temperatures. And I deliberately chose this bonding method, which is not epoxy, uh, for cold temperatures. According to the spec charts of the manufacturer, it actually gets stronger as it gets colder, but it loses some shock resistance. But in all cases, its uh, impact toughness is better than epoxy. Like I said, sooner or later, if you just take a sheet of steel or a sheet of titanium, and epoxy it to a plate of carbon fiber or G10 or whatever you feel like, it's going to fail at that glue joint. Let's try some wood. Not bad for a knife that weighs less than two ounces. Of course, I could take a whole bunch of weight out of that handle if I needed to.
one of your bushcraft tasks might be to make a little hole for a trap or something, like for a trigger. little square hole. I don't see any signs of delamination. I've actually got a tiny chip in the G10 though. Just hammer it cross grain right in there. Yeah, the chip's not helping helping anything, but uh, still not seeing delamination yet. Looks like this wet wood was pretty wet before it froze. Got to The chips come off really funny. I got to revise my estimate of the temperature. My fingers are freezing. <laughs> It was intended to be a light duty knife, but uh, let's uh... Mm I think we find yeah we finally got some delamination there. There's actually a little bend in the titanium. It's finally pulled away from the tip of the G10.
it was a survival tool that would keep you going for much longer than I expected. Well, the whole thing's not sharp, but there's definitely sharp spots on there still. Haven't really rolled the edge, just a little bit of impaction. I think in a survival situation, if all you had was a chisel ground composite blade like this, you'd probably want to whittle yourself some uh, hardwood wedges and then use those for splitting. But uh, if you were just to use it as a knife, and all you could carry was two ounces, oh, this isn't bad at all. <laughs> I'd be tempted to make a bigger one now, we can do some real chopping. supposed to break this. <laughs> Gotta be honest, there's a bit of vibration coming through that. Okay, so I think the G10 didn't do as well as the carbon fiber would have. You can see the G10, uh, the tip of the G10 piece is way down there. And judging by the, the wood, the frozen wood that's jammed into the joint here, I think we got wood jammed into that where the tip delaminated and then pried it apart. And then, um, of course, me whacking it from the side combination broke it and then delaminated it. You actually have, <laughs> unlike what you'd get with the way, the other way I do it where there's just a little bit of uh, a steel edge just for the edge, you still have a full tang blade here which means you could still, you know, you just wrap that handle with some cord. It's thinner now than you'd want. 
but you still have a usable edge. I guess the frozen frozen wood's not our best uh, best test here, but there you go. Bit of a long video with no uh, editing, but I did want to take it to destruction. Thanks.